Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress Terrell Rothery with me. So welcome, Terrell. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> I'm so glad you decided to, to do the show. I was telling you off camera, I've been uh, such a fan of yours for just years. I can't believe that this many years has, has went by, but you've been in, like, you're, you're nerdy, geeky, cred, very strong. You've been in I a lot it. of stuff that fits, you know, myself and, and our general audience. I absolutely love that. Nerds <laughs> unite. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess the, uh, the, the real question, the one I've been kind of burning to ask was, are we getting a sequel to Mother May I Sleep With Danger? Wow, that was, <laughs> I was going to say, what, Michael? You uh, fucker. I was uh, like, what? I Man, couldn't resist. That, like, I, 25 years ago or something? Oh, my God. I hadn't heard that. And so. <laughs> that's always been like my favorite name for anything, for a movie. It's just, I always thought just the name just crack me up every time isn't it good one? i know mother may i sleep with danger i forgot all wow they've wow. actually they actually wow. did remake that did they yes there's i i didn't know it either but there's there's a 2016 version with the same name oh my gosh i'm gonna have to i'm gonna write that down. i know how dare they wow. not give you that apparently they didn't have running coaches in the remake that's right oh my gosh isn't that funny <laughs> If people will say to me, do you remember doing blah, 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 blah? And I go, no, no. Like, I have to go back. I literally, that's where I'm at, where my, my brain goes, no. And I have to go back and look at the stuff I've done. I just forget. You forget it, right? Well, yeah, of course you do. I, you would yeah. be a really good one to play. Like you do the um, Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon. We could totally do that with you. Because you've worked with, like, everybody. Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, my gosh, Michael, that is so funny. <laughs> that would be hysterical. Yeah. Yeah. That's if you go funny. to your, like, IMBD page, it's pretty impressive. There's a lot on there. I'm pretty blessed, I have to say. Pretty grateful for everything I've been able to do. That's for sure. Yeah. You deserve a break. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what we li we live for. It's like we get a little downtime, and I, I shouldn't speak for every actor, but for myself, you get that downtime, and I'm like, oh, isn't this nice? And my daughter and I get to do different things, and then it's maybe a week, and I'm like, ooh, hmm, yeah, yeah. What's you get what's the itch? That? You get that itch. Is that's exactly it? Yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough to uh, to talk with. Uh, uh, I've talked with um, Ed Asner, you know, before he passed and Eric Roberts, who are both very, very prolific in what they did. And they said the same thing. It's like, well, you know, if you give me a day or two by myself, you know, I start getting antsy. Yeah. I just want to get back in there. It's so true. I was just I had breakfast with a, a friend of mine. She's married to um, a director and, and he also acted and. And they were talking about retirement and it's, that doesn't even factor in, Reti what, retire? Well, I guess I'll retire when there's just, there's no more work. Like you don't even think about when you're going to stop. Like it's just, it's a really odd profession. You don't work towards that retirement. You just work towards, work towards the next work, you know? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, it'll either stop or it won't. Yeah. And you'll just just keep on going. I was going to say, if anything, it would be a forced retirement, right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's it now, Terrell. Bye bye. No, I don't see it happening. I don't well, see it happening. I think I think you'll be busy for as long as you want to be busy. I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm jumping all over the place, but but I like to start here. Tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. You know, why'd you want to become an entertainer? You know what? I don't. I, I get asked that a lot because it's a great question for everybody. Um, <laughs> how did you get started in something? But, you know, yeah. 
it's all I ever knew I wanted to do. Like I'm talking four years old, people would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I didn't understand the term actor, obviously back then, but it was, well, I want to be a movie star. I just, I want to be a movie star. Like that's all I ever wanted to do. And I was, I was an only child and um, I would, I, so I'm told, I mean, I remember doing all that sort of thing, but I would play Barbies, for instance. Do they even make Barbies anymore? My daughter's so- They make Barbies. Well, Barbies much more diversified now. Oh, I bet they are. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, have, I haven't shopped for Barbie in some time. But anyway, um, I would play and I would create scenes. Like I, there was no such thing as just sort of playing. It was a scene. And if I had yeah. cousins or friends come over to play and if they weren't sort of following along with the storyline, I had no concept of storyline, but I knew they were part of it. I'd be like, that's it, oh, not playing anymore. <laughs> because I didn't understand how you, could, like even back then there's a beginning, a middle and an end, you know? That's so early though, to kind of figure out what you want to do and actually stick with it and do it yeah yeah you got to do some voices in some barbie animated stuff i did yeah so we have some of those some of those barbies i've saved for sure um i love animation that's an that's another whole area because you get to be as big as they want you to be and the beauty is you can show up in rollers really if you wanted to because nobody's looking at you yeah and and it doesn't really matter what you look like for animation it's all right. about the voice. Yeah, exactly. I cannot begin to tell you how many women I know that voice teenage boys. Yeah, it's really surprising. I guess not really if you really look at it, but when you when you watch a show and then you find out that you know it was a woman playing playing a boy, you're like, oh, I wouldn't Isn't have that guessed that. Yeah. And if you close your, even when you're in this, like in the studio with with the, the when the performance is going on and you close your eyes, you'd swear there was like a 13 year old boy beside you. <laughs> like it's, it's magical. I just, yeah. I, I'm not a full on voice actor. I love it. So when I get to do something, I, I love doing it. But the ones who commit to that, that's all full time for them. They're so gifted. They're so oh, yeah. talented. They can whip off any accent you want. It's, it's amazing. Very, yeah. Yeah, we've been lucky enough to talk to, to several, and, and they all say that it's it's tougher to get into voice acting than it is to acting. Like, it's a more select group, and then once you're in, though, you're in. Once you're in, you're in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think I couldn't act, but if I was going to act, I think I'd be more comfortable on the voice acting side because then I could hide a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, you little... That's, that's not me acting crazy. That's the, that's the, that's character. the cartoon character. Yeah. That's, right. that's a little cartoon character. <laughs> <laughs> if you if if you hadn't went into acting or entertainment, was there anything else that you would have done? Um, you know what? I'm I've always been a huge animal person. Yeah. I think I I would have gone maybe along that line I talk about that sometimes that I think oh my gosh wouldn't it have been wonderful to be a marine biologist and go live in Australia or whatever and just you know be around animals and helping so that was something I always thought about and then when I did sort of think well maybe I would want to do that I think the loss like the loss of an animal yeah. it wouldn't matter how many I would save or help but it would be that one loss and I'd be like yeah it for me I just oh yeah. 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 If you can't recover from that, that's probably not the profession. Probably not for. Yeah. Yeah. We are so thrilled that you showed up on Nancy Drew. I was uh, we were we had so we, we started watching that one. I was a big, you know, like um, children's mystery type of fan when I was growing up. I did three Hardy investigators, Boy? Hardy Boys. Yeah. And my dad used to read Sugar Creek Gang books, which was like pre-Hardy days. But so I read some of those. And, and Nancy Drew, I read some of Nancy Drew. Yeah. But but we started actually watching the show because we had some people from the show come on uh, the podcast. And then I was like, hey, and, but you showed up. And some, of, in my opinion, some of their best episodes. I thought oh. you were so good on there. Thank you so much. I had so much. I don't know where, what have you, has, have they all been aired? They've all been aired as far as I know. Um, yeah. Not, no, I yeah. If they haven't, if yeah, if they haven't watched by now, it's it's on them. 
Okay, well, <laughs> it was pre- it was pretty sad when I when I my especially because she was so hard, Celia. Celia yeah. had such a tough little cookie and the edge to her. But then you see you see how it how she evolves, and mm-hmm. how when there's that love there's some lovely moments near the end before her demise. You know that was. But it was beautiful, I mean, wonderfully written. I love the people, I love all the actors and the writing I think is is bang on. It's such a fun show, fun, fun it's show. It's fun and- that they've taken the, you know, the old stories and added the supernatural to them. I think yeah. that's kind of fun. I really like that part. Yeah, me too. And then of course, it's also got the CW, you know, teen angst type of yeah. romantic twists in there too. But it, it's it's oh, really well done. And comedy, some great, it does. Some funny, funny stuff in there. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, I always go around uh, to the to the family, the kids, and my mother, my wife, and and ask them. I'll be like, "This is who's coming on the show. What have you seen them in?" So I always know. I, I go to talk to my oldest daughter for one reason because she can tell you anybody that has ever been in any Christmas movie. Ah. So, yeah, so I showed you, and, and that's what she did. She, she's like that. She's been in, like, a dozen Christmas movies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the Christmas movie. Yeah. It's always happy. They film a lot of those in Vancouver. They do. I mean, they go all over, absolutely, but they do tend to do a lot here, and we tend to shoot, well, I guess anywhere they do. We shoot in the summer, so a lot of the times... It's, you know, snow, fake snow, stuff being brought in and you're in wool coats and, you know, hats and gloves and all of that. And you're roasting. I mean, we've had, I don't know how you do that because that's, you know, how do you, you know, how do you, how do you keep yourself fans. from looking sweaty? Yeah. How do you, you know, you don't you want to sweat. Your makeup, your makeup artist is not far away is running in to hold the fan to you. They powder <laughs> you up and then it's like, okay, let's roll. But literally, yeah, it can be your, it, it can be trying. And, and the background actors, I've, I've been on sets where it's sometimes so hot and they're so bundled up that we've actually had a couple drop from, you know, heat stroke yeah, that's awful. Heat exhaustion. And, yeah. But when you see it on the screen, it's snowy yeah. and it's pretty. It looks, and it's it looks like Christmas. Yeah. They're I didn't like realize that. that a lot of, um, Christmas movies that you see taking place in New York are actually being filmed in Vancouver. I thought that was kind of neat. Well, that's why it's such, it's a really versatile location here in Vancouver because you can still get, you can get the, that New York look, you can get the country look, you can get the LA look. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of locations here that they, they tend to like and gravitate towards. And we're very grateful. And uh, the crews here in Vancouver are amazing as well. Like incredibly, they know exactly what they're doing. So it's, it, it works. Well, and they're busy. Mm-hmm. Like those, uh, I don't think those productions slow down that often, maybe the last couple of years a little bit, but. Things slow, well, yeah, I think the whole world slowed down during that time, but yeah. And they're, but they're back up and running and they're going. Yeah. yeah. So one show that, we loved um was wayward pines and and you had a little uh stint on there that was like pre stranger things you know yeah. it was those guys doing that and it was such a good kind of unique show it was based on a set of books i think if mm. i remember right Blake. um oh my gosh yeah Is i've forgotten Blake? yeah he did a, a series of them and yeah they're great can you i mean it was really well done yeah, we were hoping for another season, but the yeah. ones that came out really good. They ended up. What did they do? Was it two? I think it was two, and you got basically a different cast both years. I mean, you had a few holdovers, but you know, a few holdovers. Like, but it was like it went to a different place, I believe. Second season where they brought yeah. in some where the younger kids were around. I think yep. most of the adults sort of were taken. Yeah. Yeah. They were they were out, but it was which is not easy to do. Most of the time when shows do that, you you lose something. I think that big a change, but I thought it held up pretty good. Yeah, really, good. It did really well. Yeah, yeah. 
That was a, a nice one to, I always like it when you show up on a show and I'm not expecting you to be on there because I'm like, well, things just got a little better. No matter what's Aww. going on, like I know you're going to do a good job. You're such a doll. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love popping you're up. Welcome. I love popping up. That's nice. Up. That's what I said. You've been on so many shows and I know we got to talk Stargate because that's the one everybody you know, wants to, and they should, it's awesome. But you've been on so many nerdy shows. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed you on uh, Arrow. thought you were really good. Uh, That's true. I loved yeah, that. Yeah, that was a fun one. And it was several episodes. Yeah, she, and they would bring her back. Uh, Jean Loring was the character. Yeah. yeah, it was a good one. It was a good show. Really good show. Yeah, we, we enjoyed that. And it was one of the early. Now there's a zillion CW superhero shows, but it was like oh, the first. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. they're doing the, the multiverse too, aren't they? They're like crossing yeah. stuff. As, so, so, cool. so in the nineties, I was a uh, comic book store owner. Oh my so, gosh! Where so in West Virginia? In West Virginia, that's how I put myself through college. I had a, a couple of little stores here local, and and just kind of work. It was the best. It was the best. I and missed you don't it, do it anymore. So you left it. You stopped. I it. left it. So so in ninety six, Marvel Comics went bankrupt. And I was like, it's over. <laughs> no, they went bankrupt. Yeah, they went bankrupt. And I was like, it's what? over. That's 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 why all their, you know, all their people, all their characters were owned by different companies and stuff because they had to sell that stuff off <gasps> with that. And then, and then they spent like the last couple of decades trying to pull them all back together. But if I'd known... Well, and there was more to it than that. You know, I'd getting married, starting a family, owning comic book stores was terrific as a college single guy. And with a family, a little more tough. So I was like, it's over. So I got out of it. And then, of course, you know, Marvel came back stronger than ever. <laughs> 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 that's okay, though. I miss it. And that's part of the reason, I guess I'm going into a little history, but that's that's the biggest reason why my son and I started doing the podcast because we were looking for ways that we could connect and kind of enjoy the nerdy things that we like. And I didn't have, you know, the stores anymore. He wasn't around when I had them. So this was our way of connecting. So it worked Aww. out okay. I love that you two do this. That's fantastic. Yeah. But anyway, so back then was when all of the stories that they're doing on the shows now, that's when they were actually in the comics so it's for me, it's been really great getting to see all that stuff that I kind of grew up on showing up, you know, and what on are screen. Your, what are your thoughts as a comic book person, like to see it, you know, in the print? Are, are you sometimes disappointed with how it transfers to screen? Yes, but I'm I'm more happy than disappointed. Good. Because it's right. it's it's not always easy to to transfer it. And I and I think um comic i know you don't probably know uh, comic book history real well but comic books got into this you know where they had to it was almost like a soap opera where they had to one up themselves every year so they'd start you know they'd kill off superman or they or somebody else but then 6 months later they bring them back and they kind of diluted i think you know some of the uh the oh. danger you know yeah. with that yeah so so it's you know the the stories that I love though that's the ones they're actually doing on TV now. So they've taken like the good parts of them yeah. and left some of the bad out. So for the most part, very happy. I think Marvel's done a terrific job, and I think DC's improving. Like DC yeah. on the on the small screen, you know, TV much better, but they've struggled oh, a little bit with the 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 movies. Although I think they're figuring it out. I think they're starting to starting to pull it together. You know, we'll see. I just love getting to go. There, were, You didn't have that. You know, when we were growing up, you didn't have that stuff to go to the movies or TV. You might have had uh, Michael Keaton or Christopher Reeves. Yeah. That was about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I miss the days. But anyway, I got off track again. But yeah, so <laughs> you were you're an arrow. You also showed up on Babylon 5, one of the movies, I think. How fun was that? Yeah, we did one of the movies. I'm and such I a fan. Bruce and I had done something or I oh I know what it was. My very first convention ever uh in the sci-fi world was with Bruce. Oh really? 
Yeah. And so I was, I, I was like, what is this all about? Explain it to me. It was the first year of um, Stargate. So oh. he just sort of took me under his wing and said, okay, well, this is all going to be good. And I remember sort of walking around in a daze thinking, is this, is this for real? Because at one point, Bruce, and we're, for those who aren't familiar, we're talking about Bruce Boxleitner. Um, Bruce and I had to not officiate at a wedding, but he was like the, the best man. And I was like the, the maid of honor, literally. And we signed, we were witnesses. We, there was an actual Babylon 5 that's, wedding. Oh, that's awesome. In full costume. And Bruce and I, I said, is this, a, is this? And I just remember sort of going, okay. And signing that, cause I was a witness at this wedding. And it was just to me at the time, surreal. And then as I go I love. Them. I would like to know if those two are still together. You know, I bumped into them again with their baby. Oh. They had a baby. Oh. Now I can't, I don't know where they are now, but um, because everything sort of stops right when you're yeah. the pandemic thing happened, and um, but it's just it is the gift that keeps on giving. It's amazing. Like, this the sci-fi like the fans that that genre that they still keep watching and they will support you and follow you when you move on to say Hallmark or whatever other show you're doing they're there it's just it's phenomenal so from that very first year I've just loved every chance I get to go and meet the people who support the show and watch the shows I love it just finished yeah I'm so glad I'm so glad you do that you know in the back in the 90s I was doing comic conventions. There was no celebrities. It was just artists and writers. You know, there was no wow. cosplayers. There was there was very few women. It was mostly you know, male. Um, and it was fun back then. So much better now because it's so big now. You know, it's, everybody's involved. It's kind of cool to be nerdy now. You know, and there's it's not just comic books. It's movies, TV, you know, books. It's It's really gotten gotten big and it's the best people are they the best the best i mean the they're best. so you like like if you're in line to see somebody that you're a fan of with that you know that can be kind of a stressful occurrence and you think people will be battling to you know to get ahead in the line and that, there's none of that going on oh. it's it's very polite everybody's just enjoying the time together um, and not only that yeah. they i mean friendships what I see are people that have met, yeah. they meet at conventions, right? Or Comic Cons. And they one lives in Australia, one is somewhere in the US. They they <laughs> they all congregate wherever that is. And these are like lifelong friendships. Yeah. A lot of times go, yeah, they'll meet at the conventions every year. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. It it's, is it's pretty great. I you know they're they're coming out with a new Babylon five. They are? Yeah, it's gonna be on the CW. Oh my God! It should be interesting. <laughs> and so, what are they going to do? Is Bruce going to go back? I oh I think it's a reboot, but I okay. I don't know for sure. You know, wow. same gentleman writing it, so so it should be pretty good. I love it. We'll see. You know that that's that's what we do. We just keep bringing stuff, the things we love. We bring them back. I know you. I was going to say you keep talking about the '90s, but there's so many shows that are coming back. Yeah. You know, I love that. I do too. As 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 I get older, those that you know, that's the ones you connect with. I think when you're when you're growing up, those are the shows you really connect with. So it's yeah. fun, even if it turns out to be a disappointment when it comes back. Just the build up and the excitement of of you know, kind of getting it back tough. again. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun, yeah. and it's tough. You know, it it be it's tough to redo something and recapture the magic. I agree. It's tough. I agree. Tough. We're waiting on a Stargate. It's about, time to, it's about time to bring it back. I wish it would come back. Well, they might. Who knows what they're going to do? They might do a, like a reboot of it with different, with the younger cast. And that would be an interesting thing to see. Yeah, it, it's, it's a good time to do it because you've got so much of the cast from all the different versions still around. Yeah. You know, you could have guest stars wherever you wanted. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. We're ready. We're ready for some more Stargate. Well, hopefully they're going to listen and hear you say that. We're going to get it started. I'm going to make some phone calls. We'll get that taken care of. Okay. <laughs> I've got I've got a good friend who who works for Hallmark, but he did he was a writer for the 
um, Stargate the uh, the web series that they oh, they did okay. uh, uh, after Universe. I've forgotten the the name of it now, but Stargate Universe came out, and then there was a web series. He did some of that, oh, wow. and and I was like, I, I keep bugging him. I'm like, well, won't you call somebody up and let's let's get something out there? So nothing, nothing no, yet. 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 Yeah, Nothing well, yet. they're not going to tell us. It's going exactly. to be a surprise. Yeah, you know, as a as a fan, we want to know everything and still be surprised. Exactly. <laughs> Even if we have to pretend we're surprised, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, when you got the role for for Stargate, were you a fan of the movie? Oh yeah, I loved the movie. The movie was really good. I loved it. Yeah, loved the movie. Um, and when I got the role, it was just to be like a one-off, right? She was a guest star yeah. that made recur, and she did for seven seasons, and it was just an absolute gift. Such yeah, it was a gift. pretty great. It was kind of heartbreaking, you know, there at the end, but I know great. it was sad. Yeah, it was sad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to this day I I haven't watched that episode. <laughs> it's time. Can't do it. But I mean, even in reading it, I was just like, oh. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. Right? It's so heartbreaking. Anytime you lose, uh, uh, like, I mean, I was attached to her, obviously, because I just loved, I call it being in her skin or in her shoes. I loved playing <laughs> planet so much. Um, but I know what it's like when, you know, I get attached to a character in a show and, and if they're gone, I'm... Yeah, it's because you think about there's that familiarity because the television's either in your bedroom, it's in the living room, you watch it all the time, right. it's a family thing, you know, you'll sit and watch together and you get invested into these characters. So when one of them goes, it's like, oh, wow, wow, yeah. just, you know, rough. Yeah. Although that's what makes a good show. Yes. You got to have some, you got to have some danger in. Yeah, you do. You got to lose some people that you love on occasion because it makes it more, more real. Exactly. Yeah. I wish they'd have picked somebody that. different. I would have liked to have kept you on. Oh, no, wouldn't that have been nice? I know. I love you. <laughs> I'm not it. sure who I would have picked, though. It was such well, a good see, cast. I just got an idea. You just made me think of something because you talked about doing a reboot of it. Yeah. Don't forget all of us that remember the people that I the the the, peop, the fellow I saved. Yes. Named their baby after Janet. So maybe yes. that Janet would appear in the the new. Oh, I like where this is going. What's we that? need to workshop this. I like this where this is going. Right. This is a I show. Mean, and then the new Janet goes to, because in season nine, uh, Janet Frazier came back from an alternate universe. They reunite. Who knows? So you could there totally do yes. this. Inspiring writers. That yes, you could totally do that. It's, uh, it was like a multiverse before the multiverse. Yeah. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> I, I, I'm in on this. I like this idea. Because then, yes, you wouldn't have to. You could just you could just be you, and then you get a new person to play the the now grown up baby. Yeah, and they meet. Right? And they meet. Ah, I, like I love that. it. Me too. I love it. Yeah, I like that. Did you get writing credits on that I, one, Mike? Yeah. I, okay, we're yeah. we're going to take care of that, or we I'll make sure both money. of us get a lot of. Yeah. A lot of credit on that. Do at least the special thanks there at the end. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's been worse ideas for programs. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Sure, I think so too. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think we could draw in some of the rest of the cast. They don't have to come back full time if they don't want to. They can just pop in on occasion. Wouldn't that be fun? It'd be fun. I'll still keep in contact, not regularly, but there's a text, you know, because we're all so busy. Everybody's in their own, doing their own thing with families and all of that. So it's nice every once in a while, we'll always check in. How you doing? What's happening? That's Miss good. you? What's your face? Little things like that. Yeah. So you got like a group text that you're all in? Not a group text. There's been one where Amanda and, and Michael Shanks and I were in for a bit and, you know, she was busy doing this, he was doing something else and, you know, let's try and get together. So 
it, it's always we want to get together but then schedules and it, with amanda she's so busy right now as you oh, must she's busy correcting all the time and then yeah, yeah, yeah. she's so busy her. yeah yeah she really is she's really good yeah she really is yeah yeah she's uh She's terrific. That's what I said. The whole cast was so good. And I love the fact, I thought one thing Star, Stargate got right was anytime another science fiction show ended, they would go and grab some of that cast, bring them on the show. And I thought that was so smart, just from a marketing standpoint, because they've already got fans, yeah. you know, sci-fi fans, very loyal. So you bring those over, even for a guest spot, you're going to have people coming to to check that out. And it just made, not that Stargate wasn't big enough on its own, but it just made it yeah. bigger and bigger, I think. Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah we got to get this back. <laughs> Look at you go. I can see the wheels turning. What do you, you got going on the rest of the evening? Let's, not, let's just knock this out. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> if we could just base it here in West Virginia. Why not? Why not? Well, I could, I could, uh, I could put you guys. Shiny. I could put you could stay in the studio building. We got a whole building here. We'll just put everybody up in the building. There you go. Yeah, there you We're go. Saving, saving costs. We'll shoot it right on Main Street here in St. Albans. Love it. I think it. I think there's something there. It could be kind of like a, um, maybe a, a combination Stargate Eureka type of thing. So we got the small Ooh. town feel but you still got the stargate element that's the nice thing with the stargate you can go anywhere you can no matter where you start dial it up yeah dial it up yeah hmm. i think i think we're on to something here totally although it also would be a pretty good christmas movie you could totally do santa claus using wow. this can you imagine a christmas movie with the gate yeah i can <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he has to get to every house some way. What if he's using a Stargate? <laughs> See the whoosh and all the things are coming through it. Oh, you love that one. Yeah, somebody's going to steal these yeah. ideas. Yeah. And we'll have Rick play Santa. Yes. Yes. Done. Right? Yeah. That's that's an easy call. Yeah. I think it's fun going back and looking at the, the different versions. And some of those actors that you didn't know at that time now have went on to become pretty well-known actors. And I think that's always kind of fun, too. You know, some you already knew, but then you got some kind of, they got bigger once they left Stargate. And I thought that that's always neat when you see that. Yeah. 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 Now, tell me if I'm right or wrong, because I was thinking, I'm trying to think while I'm talking. Okay. But you in your voice acting role, then you do um, a movie or a show where you were the Baroness for like Cobra, you know, G.I. Joe and Cobra. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what oh, I thought. Yeah. It was G.I. Joe. Yeah. yeah. That's right, too. I, I, thought, about that one. I thought so. Yeah, that's a pretty good role, too. She was fun. Yeah, because she's kind of a badass, but she's a bad guy. Yeah. I Strong like woman character. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it's not too uh not too terrible. I still remember back this is back early 80s. Uh Marvel was coming out with the G.I. Joe comic book. And it was it was they it really hyped up. They really hyped it up. And and I'd saved up my money. I was probably, I don't know. 12 years old, something like that. And at that time, comics were like 35 cents. Yeah. But that issue was going to be a dollar fifty because it was on a fancy, the very first G.I. Joe. The very first G.I. Joe was going to be a dollar fifty. And it was because it was a fancier paper, higher quality paper. So I saved up and I bought like 10 of them, which was a big deal. It was like 15 bucks. It was a big deal for me at the time. So I bought all these ones. And then but it, I thought this is the best idea ever. I'm going to make a fortune. It's going to, and what it turned out was everybody had that idea. So they had wow. these massive quantities of that first issue were bought, but then nobody bought the second issue. So now when you look back, 
the first issue is worth a little bit, but not that much. But that second issue, really hard to find. It's worth a whole bunch. And you didn't get it either. I got one copy just so I could read it. But I got, I probably still got stacks of the first issue. <laughs> Did you save all your comic books? No, I saved them. That's that's what I used as my base, okay. you know, to open up stores. And then I purchased um, some inventory. And then when I shut down, I uh, I sold everything I had on eBay and uh, and paid off the house. That wow. was my so that so it worked out, but but I do wish I could have held on to some of the you know the the big issues. Yeah. Passed them on to my son. But you don't know that stuff. He wasn't even around then. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know then. It's the old oh if only, right? Can't if only. Can't so now I'm that guy that every every time somebody brings up an issue, I was like, oh, I used to have that. I used to have that. You say that like a million times and people get pretty tired of it. Yes. <laughs> But it's a fact. It is yeah, a fact. Yeah, we had it. Yeah. We had it. You know, thankfully, I've still got some pictures of like the wall, you know, in the comic book. You you go in a comic book store and they have that wall behind the counter. It's got all the best issues. So I still got a few of those. So I got oh. Lisa. I really did have it. <laughs> That's fantastic. What a great keepsake. Yeah. But yes, you're reminded every time you walk into your house. Oh, yeah. For sure. It's your home. It's home. Well, and that time, we've sold that that since then we've moved we've moved on from that. But it did it gave us a start. Yeah. You know, so I can't re- I can, it's hard to regret that. Yeah, exactly. And you know, there was just that very short window where you know before Amazon came out where eBay was the thing. You know, and you could sell it stuff was like huge, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so big. And then Amazon came out and now it's it's so much easier to to get anything. Yeah. You know, where back then eBay, that was it. If you had something rare, if you were a collector and looking for it, eBay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where, where I was going with that, but that there you go. But that was a, another reminder. There you go. So my mother, I told you my daughter saw you in all the Christmas movies. My mother's uh, a uh, Cedar Cove fan. So, Aww. yeah, she said, oh, I love her in that. Because mom wouldn't know. I'd tell her, well, what about, what about Stargate, mom? You see her? No. no, no. <laughs> what, what is that? And then, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's oh, I love Cedar Cove. I still miss that. I wish they'd revisit that one, too, and do a, a TV movie of it. That was so much fun. Yeah. Another really fun series. And Great Cat. And Bruce Boxleitner was on that, of course. Yes. He's the Scarecrow. You remember him on uh, Scarecrow, Mr. Scarecrow, and Mrs. King? Mr. King? Yeah. yeah. Right. I say I say that joke to the kids, and they don't know what I'm talking about. They don't get it. Scarecrow. Yeah. But yeah, so let me run through a few of them. And if I can, I'll try to remember a few things you've been on. Um, Supernatural. Yep. Positive about that one. Uh, Dead Zone. Yep. Dead Like Me. Yep. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There's probably more, but that's. Do you remember Mantis? Oh, Mantis. Yes. Love Mantis. Mm-hmm. Ah, wasn't there a, um, what was the one? It was in a town. Sci-fi. Kind of like post-apocalyptic. Well, that was the. That was the. Um, well, it's Wayward Pines. Wayward but wasn't there. Of. Was there a no, no, no? I was gonna say uh Jericho, but it wasn't Jericho. I don't think oh, I wrote it down. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, yes, that was it. That was and it. that was uh Straczynski who did that one, who also did yeah. Babylon Babylon 5. Yeah, that's that's why I, I that that's originally why I had watched it. That's right. Was, uh, and yeah. what did they do? They did two seasons, two I seasons? think it was two seasons. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, it's pretty good. And of course, the X-Files. Oh, yeah. That was so great. So I th- if I remember right, you were on a couple episodes, but were you the same character in both episodes? In was what? It like in uh, X-Files. No, X-Files, I was only in one episode. One okay, year. okay. Well, that was it. I was thinking you were on twice and maybe played different characters, but okay, so you're on the one X-Files. But some did do that. There were some that yeah, yeah, played yeah. roles as it went on. As, well, it was on for a while. Same with Supernatural. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was like one of the longest. Yeah, I did two of those ones. I think and it I would be. Oh, Outer Limits. That's right. See, this, this is pretty good. And of course, one of my favorite movies, Best in Show, you were in that. Oh my Not gosh. really geeky, but that's that was such a fun movie. Fun movie and and brilliant. I mean, to have um, Jennifer, I got to work with Jennifer Coolidge and Jane Lynch, who are just two phenomenal <laughs> yeah, women. But the fact that, you know, this is Christopher Beth uh, Guest's baby, and the majority of it was all ad lib. There were, we didn't have actual scripts. I'm so impressed with that because I think um, ad libbing is so difficult. I, yeah, I'd much rather well, memorize. I mean, you had you had certain points that you had to get across for the storyline. So he would give you, pardon me, you need to make sure that this is out. This is the name. So there yeah. were certain things that had to come out, but it would just naturally flow, and you just played off each other and just went for it. Does it take longer? in that type of scenario to, to film something? Cause do you have to do, do you take like several takes or is it? I, about yeah, there's a lot of takes. And also you just keep going and going like they yeah. just run it and they can then cut what and take whatever they want. But there's just, and that would be to me that the treasure would be to pick up all the stuff that didn't get put into the movie and see that because yes. So much great I'm stuff. I'm surprised they haven't done more of that. They sure did. They, what a little they bit. They did three of them, didn't they? Wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think they did three. Yeah. No, I think that's exactly right. I think there's three. Yeah. That, but I'm, I'm betting that you could do just a whole, like a movie length type of feature just with outtakes. Yeah, just you could. The, I bet yeah. you could. I think it'd be funny. It's hard to find stuff that's just really good and funny. I, I'd yeah. watch that. I would watch it. I'd buy yeah. that. I'd yeah. buy that. You don't have to buy anything. Well, you still buy it, but you don't have to actually own anything. Just stream it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I'm not as big a fan of that. I like to have it. Like. The, yeah, you know, like like reading a book. You don't even have to read a book now, you know, or, or own a book. You can just have it on a tablet. I know, but I still like my books. I do too. I I like too. Have I, you I, done? I, have you done like book work? Have you done uh, like the, the audio of the book? Yeah. No, the only did I do one or two? I did a Stargate audio book. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I don't even. That's remember. pretty good. There you go. You you have to have like a soundproof closet that you can hide in and then you can well you do it in the studio what well, back then we did it in the studio but now so many other people they just do it in their homes yeah they just do it at home the, the, the voice people have their own studios yeah i know some of them i'm so jealous of well you have yours look at wherever you are we, yeah well so yeah we put up this background because when we started we were in just a bedroom yeah. but then we like the background so even once we got in a studio we're like ah we'll keep it up yeah no i like it it's a little unique. It is. It's great. So we're like, yeah, we'll just, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> well, so you've done all these different things. Is there, is there, you know, a genre or, or something that you haven't got to do as much of that you would like to do? No. Can't no. think of any. Western, maybe? Have you done a Western? I did. Yeah, I guess it would be a Western. I did. It was anthology called dead man's gun oh very nice i played um the wife of the late john ritter who was just a phenomenal yes actor. yeah that was such a loss yeah it was a big loss um yeah so that was a western i remember having to walk okay. around with that corset on and uh when calls the heart <laughs> that's a western i did uh you know yes okay that well so yeah well and you've around. done you've done comedy and drama and done the romance, uh, romance you've done the romance drama, you've horror, done the yes, horror so. yeah yeah they're i guess science fiction yep i guess that's probably probably about it my uh, uh i know we gotta we gotta wrap up my wife said to tell you that i don't watch this one but she watches virgin river and she's because you're yes, terrific. tell her thank you tell her thank you very very much yeah she yeah. uh that's one. She doesn't watch many shows. Yeah, you know, like she'll watch if I turn something on, she'll watch it. But she's yeah. not really a TV person. But she 
she found that one on her own and really, really enjoyed it. She said, oh, yeah, it's terrific. And you're great. And so she said, make sure to tell her. I was uh, like, okay, I'll tell her. <laughs> I'll thank her for me. And you can tell her that uh, season four will be airing. I don't know when, but season four is done and it, it'll be eventually put on the air. And we are also doing season five. We got picked up for a season five. So I'm not sure when that's going to start up, but yeah. Isn't that crazy that, mm -hmm. that you already know that there's another season coming? I don't know. It's different, I think. Yeah, well, they, they announced it. They, yeah. they announced it and people were happy about it and we were excited about it. So, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good show. Yeah, it's Great pretty cast. good. Great cast. So, I, you know, I mentioned Eureka and you were on that. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't thinking it at the time, but you were on that. And My, Colin, so, you know Colin. Yes, yes. Started. He was on Cedar Cove with us. I knew that, actually. I love, I, I love his I voice. Think, I believe you. I'm just looking at you. Going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know yeah, you're you know why? Remember. You know, I, I, I loved him because he was, like, he he wasn't completely unknown when Eureka came out. He was, like, the Maytag guy it's right around that time. As the Maytag and, guy. And, and so he was pretty well known because that commercial was everywhere and stuff. And yeah. then Eureka was one that I watched with, with one of the rare non-Christmas shows that my daughter watched. We watched that one together when she was growing up. Aww. Love that, and 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 we loved him on there. So good, and so He's now I look it. for him. I look for him in different uh, things, and I've tried to get him on the uh, on the podcast a few times. So I've I did see that he has been on Cedar Code. Yeah, I should ask my mother if she knows him. I was going to say, yeah. ask her. Yeah, yeah. He, I think oh, he's, he's such great. a good actor. He'd be great on this show, and he's done Hallmark movies as well. I'm sure your daughter oh, knows yeah. him and. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She knows. She knows that because she she did recognize him from. Uh, she loved Eureka, and that is so rare because she she is not. That's not her type of thing. She just right. enjoyed that. Probably didn't hurt. We did that together. It's always fun when you do Isn't something. Isn't that fun when you watch a show with yeah. your kids? There's not very many that you can do that with. <laughs> no, there's not. Well, I have to tell you, my daughter is into stuff that she'll turn it on. And I'll go. Nope, I can't watch that. I know. Yeah. yeah. I can't do it. And as a, you, you know, like when we were growing up, everything had a happy ending. It was all tied up, no matter what was going on, tied up nice ending at the end. And I always thought, why don't they have it in? It shouldn't always end that way. Well, now it doesn't end that way most of the time. It's, you know, it's very, it kind of leaves it open ended or it's kind of bittersweet. And now all I want is the happy end. Just give me the happy ending. Because if I, if I don't want the happy ending, I just have to turn on the news station, right? And then I can go to my home and have my happy ending. I yeah. mean, you invest all this time in a show or a movie, and then it just ends. Yeah. And it's, there's no real ending, there's, and it's not happy, and you're just like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to think about it later. Just, give, just wrap it up for me. <laughs> So it's so, okay. So, so a couple things before, before we finish up. So I've told you, I think just about everybody in the family. Now you want to guess what my son knew you from my son, who is supposed to be geeky like me that, you know, should be watching a lot of this stuff, but he does yeah. his own. He's, you know, he's a librarian. So he's more book geek than TV. Mm -hmm. geek, but, so any guesses on, on it's, it's the one show that he's seen you on. It was his favorite show. Still is, I guess. Oh my gosh. We've named a ton. It was none of them we've mentioned. So far. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you've stumped me. I know. So, psych. No. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> he loved that show. Yeah, he loved, he loved, loved psych. I just, I got the biggest kick out of that because I was like, there's like a billion things that you have probably seen her in. That's the one he's like, yeah. she's, she's on site, Dad. I'm like, okay. That's <laughs> too funny. That oh. was a good show. It's still oh. a good show. It's still coming out on in movies now. Is it? Yeah, what they do a movie funny? every couple of years. 22? Huh? Your son's 22. 22. Brett. Okay. Yeah. Right. Brett? Brett. What a nice name. I know. I fought with his mother because I wanted it to have one T, you know, kind of like Brett Maverick. Double T? And and she went out with the double T. And now looking at it, I'm like, yeah, that's probably better. Yeah. 
She uh, mothers know. <laughs> the moms know. Yeah, never listen to the dad to pick a name. That's <laughs> bad. <laughs> I was like, you're lucky that I wasn't a very good arguer. Yeah. Because <laughs> it had, uh, I, was there, is anybody else use Brett with one T, Brett Maverick? Brett, Brett Michaels? Is Brett Maverick only one T? It was just one T. Oh. Which is why I liked it. I was a Western guy. What was Brett Butler? No, oh, that was Brett. Brett Butler. That was Brett. That was Brett oh, Butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a double. Well, there team. is a Brett Butler. There is? There is, um, but he's a baseball player. Oh. And he's two T's. Okay. But there was a Rhett. Yeah, of course, Rhett Butler. But yeah. There you go. All right, I've got his way off track. <laughs> Harold, thank you so much for doing this. This is It's been the best. Oh, you're the best. You crack me up. Oh, my gosh, Michael. It's just so fun reminiscing. That's what you've been on so many things I love. It's just fun just bringing them up. Yay. And I'm sure we missed a ton. It'll come up at some point. It'll come up. Well, you have to come back, and then we'll have part there two. There you go. Yeah. We we'll have part two, and we'll act out a scene from our new Stargate Santa With Claus. The, the, the young Janet. Oh, yeah. Can, I wonder Claus. if we could combine that. Could we bring Santa Claus into it with the young Janet and, and the alternate reality Janet? Could they all be? I think, why not? Maybe. Why not? Maybe you're coming in to help save Christmas with the young Janet. Oh, I like that. You don't like that? I like that a lot. There you go. <laughs> Whether or not that's that's a good <laughs> movie, I don't know. I feels like that's more of a movie than a show. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Stargate Santa. That's what I... Stargate from Santa. Home. <laughs> there you go. From home. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot okay a couple of things but before i let you go um anything that you're currently working on that we can kind of keep an eye out for you well as i say uh, keep an eye out for uh season four of virgin river yeah yeah and i'll be sure to keep you all posted when we start uh filming on season five that's exciting yeah it's good. i'm gonna have to go back and watch that show she absolutely loves it you and it was should. one of those, she was too far ahead. You know, she binged it one day oh, yeah. and then I was like half a season behind. And so I was just like, I never started. I need to, I need to try to catch up before. Yeah. You at should. least before season five. Exactly. You then we can watch together. There you go. All right. All right. That's really good. Okay. So last thing, where can we find you on social media? Oh, uh, Instagram, um, Twitter. I have a website. Yeah, I was well. on your website. It's very nice. Yeah. Do you do that yourself? Good Lord, no. Yeah, I wouldn't do it either. I, I can't even figure out. Gotta have a guy. I need somebody to do it. I well, it's well done. Good. I will let them know. Thank yeah. you. Well, I think you should because uh, uh, web people, they do a lot of good work. And Absolutely. people don't, you know, all they get is criticism. You know, when something's wrong, that's when they hear it. Exactly. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, very good. Yeah, you are so easy to find. Good. Yeah. You popped. I, I didn't realize you had a website and it popped right up. So, Yay. Uh, yeah, I was playing around on there a little bit. Good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Well, thank you so, so much. And absolutely, we have to do this again. And maybe maybe we can find you at a convention at some point now that they're starting back up. Yeah. Well, I, I was saying briefly, we just did. I just did Fan Expo. Oh, Vancouver, nice. which, was, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was so much fun. They're always so much fun. Again, I love going out and meeting everybody. And I'll be in Chicago um, for... It's getting uh, closer to us. That's in June. Yeah, I'll be out there in June. Mm -hmm. yeah. So who did they have you sitting next to at the Fan Expo? I, I was sitting beside two young actors from Superman. In the oh. Lowest. Yeah, and... Oh, very good. I think he was beside that. Then not too far away was William Shatner. Oh. And then beyond that, we had tra the Trailer Park Boys. And, oh, my gosh, it just kept on going and going. Thank you, uh, uh, William Shatner. That's that's my whale. 
that I've been trying to to land my entire life. Still, I haven't done it. Still, I haven't done it. He's a tough one because he's just so busy. He's so busy. I mean, the man just went into space. Oh my right? god! Okay. Crazy at ninety. I, I love it. I, I thought it was phenomenal? just. Ter- I thought it was just terrific. Yeah, me too. I had. I'll get a real quick William Shatner story. So. When I had the comic book store, I came up with this idea. This is before the internet, years before the internet. I was like, we're going to have William Shatner come to the store. That's so, and I don't I don't know how, because it was all we had, there was no cell phones, it's just a phone. Somehow we tracked down his agent, me and my buddies. And we got him on the phone. And he's like, Yeah, we can make that happen. No. And you know, so I'm like holding the phone like. William Shatner's going to come to the store. And I get back on the phone and he's like, yeah, it's this amount of money. What, and I don't remember what the amount was, but it was more than the store was worth. That's what I remember. It's crushing. Yeah. crushing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe if I'd known, maybe I could have just sold the store and we could have just hung out there in the empty store. <laughs> hung out in the empty store and no house. <laughs> <laughs> and no house. <laughs> but someday... Someday yeah. we'll I'll, I'll cross paths with him someday. There you go. We'll see. So if you see if you run into him, you tell him I'm coming for you. I'm coming. <laughs> Watch out for that guy. You, in owe West you owe him. Yes. Yeah, he's been looking for you for like thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Terrell. Thank, Thank you so much, Michael. This has yeah. just been the best. Thank you. Let's do it again. Yes, for sure. I'm in. Okay, hold on one second. All right, that was a fun one for me. So. Terrell Rothery, I uh, wow, such a fan of hers. It's, if uh, you know, I was talking there at the end that you know we've been chasing uh, Bill Shatner around for thirty years, and it's true. But in my my top ten list of people that I would just absolutely loved to watch and still love, and everything that they're in, Terrell's absolutely on that list. I just love her. My opinion, she was the best part of Stargate, and that's saying something because it was loaded. And I'm a big Farscape fan, and they bought, you know, brought uh, Ben and Claudia over, who I, I love as well. But, you know, I always felt like uh, when, when she showed up in an episode, I was like, oh, I know this episode's going to be good. She's just terrific. And we didn't even get to talk about everything that she's uh, done. And I wrote uh, a bunch down. I should have mentioned uh, Caprica, I'm a big Battlestar Galactica fan. She was so good in uh, in the spinoff Caprica. Um she had a recurring, you know, she was on The Good Doctor a bunch, and, and we uh, we love uh, to watch that show as well. She was in a show called Hellcats, um, Kyle XY. Those were some of them that I probably uh, probably should have uh, brought out. Oh, and Masterminds with uh, Patrick Stewart. Can't believe I left that out. We'll have to get her back on. There's so much more to uh, to talk about. Thank you guys so much. For tuning in again this week, listening to me babble. Hopefully, you get enough of the guests that we're bringing on, uh, like Tara, who are just terrific, and that makes up for my nonsense. Really appreciate you coming back uh, week after week. You know, if you haven't done so yet, could really use the help on our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. If you could subscribe, that would be just uh, it would mean so much to us. It would really help us out. You can find all 350 or so episodes on our website, meistercon.com. Um, there's a terrific blog. It's just fun. It's geeky. Uh, my son, Brett, writes it. And he is just, a, in my opinion, just an absolutely talented writer. So I, I know you'll enjoy that. If we're doing anything in studio, if we're going to any conventions, if we're going on location anywhere, all that will be on the website, meistercon.com. Thank you guys so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>